Science fiction has been trying to predict the future since ancient Greece, but there's one film I've always thought seems to have accurately predicted an uncanny amount about humanity's direction of travel. I'm not talking about 2001 A Space Odyssey, Blade Runner, or even Minority Report. It's the animated story of a little trash-clearing robot, Wally. I usually enjoy being right, but not in this instance. I'm not, I, don't, I, I didn't want to be right on so many things on this movie. That's Andrew Stanton, the writer and director of Wally. On the surface, it's a tale of two robots falling in love on a post-apocalyptic Earth. But scratch a little deeper, and there's a fable about the consequences of consumption and technology addiction. You know, the funny thing we found out was like, where do you think technology would go and why? And what ended up being our way to, to guess that was what would seduce you? Because we were watching it happen with the foam, and we were watching it happen with these electric scooters. It's like fast food. You know it's bad for you, but it's just seductively too tasty, and you you, you cave. And so we thought, well, technology tends to like win out when it hits that part of you. It's, it's the part of you that likes, yeah, I know this probably isn't great for my eyesight to be staring at the screen all day, but I just need to click one more headline. So it's seduction that ended up being the gateway into things sticking into the culture. Wally depicts a future where Earth has become inhospitable to life. The extreme weather events it portrays are already happening with more frequency. The Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change determined in a recent report that hot temperatures that used to happen just once a decade now happen almost every three years, while droughts are almost twice as common. The film was released just a year after the first iPhone and correctly anticipates our burgeoning tech addictions. The human characters live a sedentary existence on a spaceship, floating around on hoverbeds and interacting solely via video calls. US adults now spend on average more than 11 hours a day in front of a screen. In 2008, when Wally was released, 34% of US adults were considered obese. It's now 42% and accelerating. And what are they eating? The spacebound humans in Wally eat meals from a cup. In recent years, we've seen the rise of firms like Huel and Soylent, makers of meal smoothies. The meal replacement market was worth $4.5 billion in 2008. It's now an almost $12 billion market. Then there are the satellites. The rocket ship in the film has to break through a crust of them to escape Earth's orbit. When the film was released, there were just a few hundred satellites circling the Earth. Now there are almost 8,000 and plans to add tens of thousands more. Hey, we'll deploy confirmed. Astronomers are already complaining about their declining ability to see the night sky. And the company that takes the humans into space is, of course, also a retailer called By and Large that appears to be something of a monopoly. It sounds more than a little bit like Amazon, the e-commerce giant whose sales have jumped from $19 billion in 2008 to a projected $541 billion this year. It hoovers up about 40% of US e-commerce sales. And Amazon founder Jeff Bezos also has a space exploration company called Blue Origin. Even in 2004, when he started working on Wally, Amazon was the inspiration for Stanton. We were very early adopters in our household, and we were getting boxes, uh, you know, sometimes daily. Uh, and again, that's the norm now. But at the time, I thought, where is all this trash going? Pixar's location on the doorstep of Silicon Valley may have helped it glean insights into the tech world, but the team had another major advantage when it came to predicting the future. Their boss was Steve Jobs. He was with us for 10 years, for half a week, every week. And that meant... We saw the iPhone before other people did. And I remember picking it up and, and using it, thinking it was magic like everybody else did. But I was also going, why is this feeling so familiar? Um, and I realized, oh, this is what it's like when I was used to smoke. I used to smoke to just fill the time. Like if I was standing waiting on a corner for a bus, uh, you weren't feeling awkward and, and if you just lit a cigarette and just sort of kept it going. And I thought, oh, there's some addictive quality to this. Uh, that just to, to occupy my time that is very, very, very uh, instinctual. And so, again, it wasn't a huge leap for me to go. I could see this very quickly becoming a crutch. Of course, there's plenty in Wally that hasn't yet come to pass. We are, after all, still living on Earth, and it's far more likely that climate change sends much of the world into poverty than into space. But life has an uncanny and perhaps intentional way of imitating art. The ship in Wally is called the Axiom. Elon Musk's SpaceX recently took tourists to the International Space Station. The name of the rocket? Godspeed, Axiom 1.